Hello and welcome to a new reading vlog. So I'm really loving making reading vlogs at the moment so I thought that I would do another one and this is going to be an extended weekend vlog. So in the UK, I'm not sure about other countries, this weekend is like the Easter weekend so there's like a bank holiday. Is it a bank holiday on the Friday? It's Good Friday and then it's also like a bank holiday Easter Monday. So it's a four day weekend and it is actually Friday afternoon. Now I did have a couple of things that I wanted to get finished study-wise, so based on one of my assignments. And now I'm going to have a little bit of a break before I go into, you know, the final run up to my exam. But this weekend is also the Raidathon, which is a 24-hour readathon hosted by Jade at JD Ray Reads. Obviously, by the time you're watching this, that will have passed, so I will just leave a link to Jade's channel in the description. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm sure there's going to be lots of reading sprints and stuff like that. And there aren't really any prompts for this readathon. It's just a very casual readathon where you try and read as much as you can in 24 hours. But because I also have have this big weekend. I am going to be trying to read as much as I can on Saturday but if I don't finish as many books or if I only finish one say I'm still going to have like you know Sunday and Monday as well. So the first book that I'm going to be reading this weekend I don't know if I'm going to finish it this weekend but I definitely want to get a little bit through this one and that is Dracula by Bram Stoker. This is the beautiful Folio Society edition so that's the spine and the back I really love these Photo Society editions, they're just so stunning and there are a few illustrations throughout. For example, there's one at the beginning, but I haven't really got very far in this. I'm on page 15, which is chapter 2, and this edition also had a very interesting introduction about Bram Stoker's life, and all it has taught me is that I want a period drama following Bram Stoker and Oscar Wilde and everyone around at that time. But the basic premise of this is that you have this man called Jonathan Harker. I think he's some kind of clerk or lawyer or some kind of, you know, administrative or legal person. There's my cat. And he is going to Transylvania to meet Count Dracula and I believe that he's sorting out Count Dracula's affairs. But obviously we know that Dracula is a vampire. Jonathan Harker quickly finds that out and stuff happens. But that is my first priority. If I get a little bit bored, not bored, just I feel like this is quite, it's a classic isn't it? So you can't fly through it. That doesn't really happen with classics for me. So I might go on to some other books but I will let you know if I do. And yeah, I'm very, very excited for this weekend. I'm hoping that it can be very calm and chill and can kind of redeem my bookoplathon weekend because I didn't do as well during that weekend as I would have hoped. I'm still proud of the stuff that I did get read, but I'm hoping that this extended weekend can be even better and that I end up reading a lot and having a really fun time. o'clock on Saturday morning and I thought that I'd give you a little update. So last night I actually got a nap in before Raidathon started. So Raidathon started at midnight and at about 7 I went to bed and then I slept until about 11 and then from midnight to 7 o'clock in the morning I read. I don't usually read like early morning but I thought because it's the Raidathon I would give it a go and I started 
with Dracula, which I thought would be fun, spooky. And I didn't get much further in this. I read another chapter, which was about 12 pages. So really not very much, but I'm really enjoying this. It's very spooky, very atmospheric, which is what you would expect from something like Dracula. And then I thought, why not get ahead on a shorter book so that like you know I have that sense of accomplishment because it, I might get Dracula done this weekend but it is pretty big and pretty dense so I thought I would try something a little bit shorter and I picked The Humans by Matt Haig. So this is a sci-fi and the basic premise like the setup is that this 40 year old mathematician who has like a wife and a son he figures out this theorem about prime numbers and if this research went public it would revolutionize humanity people would be able to like do intergalactic travel and basically everything would change and then you have this group of aliens who are like the most intelligent creatures i think in the universe or something they feel like they have achieved perfection and they do not want humans to find this theorem out. They're worried that if they start traveling that they will like conquer all these different planets and they just do not want humans to have this knowledge. So right off the bat they end up killing this mathematician and then they send one of their species in like his body or his form. It's not really like in his body but he looks exactly the same. They send this alien to kind of get rid of all loose ends, so delete all the papers and stuff that he was writing, find out if anyone else knew about this, and like kill those people. So kind of just like clear things up, make sure that no one knows that this theorem has been solved. And that is the basic setup. So you're following this alien who is sent to Earth as a punishment to complete this mission, and when he first arrives he is disgusted by humanity, but as you can imagine through this book he's kind of exploring what it really means to be human. Are humans worth like saving? Are they a good species? Stuff like that and it's very much an exploration of humanity and especially mental health. There are a lot of metaphors and also on the page representation of mental health and I will give warnings for suicide ideation and suicide attempts. That is a big section of this book but I really, really enjoyed this one. I loved the mental health representation. I know that Matt Haig has really struggled with his mental health and that is a prominent theme in a lot of his books. So you would expect the representation to be good. But I also just like loved the premise. I think it was absolutely hilarious. Seeing this alien meet humans for the first time and like, how we eat like cows but we call it beef so we don't have to think that it's a cow when we're eating it and that kind of thing and I just found it very heartfelt but also very funny and I obviously I read this in one go this morning so it kept me hooked throughout. I ended up giving it four stars. I think there was a little bit of like logic was a bit off at the ending but I still thoroughly enjoyed this one and I definitely want to read some more of Matt Haig's work. I definitely want to get to the Midnight Library and yeah I just really really enjoyed that and I can't believe I read a book in one go. I have not done that in like probably over a year maybe even longer. I just don't do that anymore. Now the next book that I'm going to be reading is In the Dream House by Carmen Mario Machado. This is also on my April TBR and I thought that I'd get ahead on my TBR. Why not read it this weekend? And I have listened to the first like 10 minutes, 20 minutes and I'm very intrigued because the style and the form of this memoir is a bit different than like you know your traditional chronological this is where I was born this is where I went to school this is my life blah 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 I can't really explain it very well but so far so good I think it's going to be a really raw and hard-hitting read so far I'm really proud of what I've done to read an entire book already on Saturday we've got a three-day weekend how much can I do? But yeah, I really enjoyed this one and I hope that I really enjoy In the Dream House as well.
Sunday morning. It is quarter to 12, so I haven't updated you in a while. But yesterday, for pretty much the rest of yesterday into the evening, I was reading In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. So I don't remember how much I've told you about this book, but this is a memoir following the author's experience in a past abusive relationship. And she uses this concept of the dream house as this metaphor for that time in her life, as well as like the physical place where the abuse happened. And she uses a lot of comparisons with other things. So for example, you could have the dream house as a gothic horror. You could have the dream house as, I don't know, I think one of them was like pathetic fallacy or something like that. And she uses all these concepts to explore that time in her life. And I loved this book. I was impacted so much by this. It is an incredibly upsetting read. If you are triggered by domestic violence and intimate partner abuse, anything like that, be incredibly wary about going into this book because it tackles those topics head on. There was also a lot about mental health, about anxiety, and I definitely want to pick up a copy of this book. I think that would be incredibly useful because then I would have the references there of all these things that she's referring to. And I just want to reread it again. It was a really hard book to read or listen to. I listened to this one as an audiobook and that was actually narrated by the author so I would highly recommend picking that up if you can get access to it. I listened to it on Scribd so you might be able to find it there and it was also a very short audiobook. I think it's only about five hours maybe a little bit longer than that. The writing style itself was also incredible. I definitely need to pick up some more work by this author. I know that they have a short story collection, which is Her Body and Other Parties. I'm definitely going to be picking that one up soon. The writing was just stunning and the way that the author used words and used language to really make you understand what she was feeling in those situations was just incredible. It was very poetic. A lot of these segments, they are just these like short segments. Some of them are even just like one line, but they're so powerful. And she does refer to a lot of pop culture. There's a lot of references such as like Star Trek and Doctor Who, which personally I really enjoyed. I know not everyone loves pop culture references, but there was a section that was about Star Trek which is actually something I've never watched but she explained this like story arc and it just it really hit me hard. I think the whole book hit me hard but for some reason that section made me cry. There's just so much in this book that is so incredible. I'd highly highly recommend it. If you can deal with the subject matter I would definitely recommend giving this one a go. And yeah, absolutely amazing. Five stars, one of my favourite books of the year and I cannot recommend that one highly enough. So my total page count for yesterday, I read one chapter of Dracula which was 12 pages, then I read the entirety of The Humans which was 308 pages, and then I also read the entirety of In the Dream House which was 251 pages. So my total page count for yesterday was 571 pages. I am very happy with that, so Raidathon went really well for me. But obviously this this reading vlog is not just a Saturday reading vlog, it is a Sunday, Monday and Saturday, so like an extended weekend vlog. So I'm hoping that I can read a lot more this weekend. I did really, really well yesterday. I'm so proud of what I did. Got some books down already from my April TBR. And the next book that I'm going to be reading this weekend is Sorrowland by River Solomon. This is a sci-fi, I think, maybe fantasy, something along those lines following this woman who has escaped this religious cult and she is she I think she gives birth to two children or one child or something and stuff happens I don't really know I have started that one but I'm only a couple of pages in or like ebook pages and that is an arc so that one is coming out I think in May early May so I will leave the release date at the bottom of the screen if you are interested in picking that one up I have read another book from this author I read An Unkindness of Ghosts which was a sci-fi and I really did enjoy that one I think I gave it four stars so I'm hoping that I end up really enjoying this one as well but that that is my progress, those are my plans.
Good morning. So it is now Monday morning and I haven't updated you in a while. Are we surprised? So yesterday was an interesting day, but basically it was kind of just a family day with my mum and my sister. We had like a roast dinner for lunch and then a walk in the afternoon and it was very like chill, but a lot of like family stuff. So I didn't really have much time to read in the day. I did end up reading, I think... I've put 5% of Sorrow Land and it's interesting because the whole beginning is like there's childbirth and there's like a religious cult that our main character has escaped from. I don't think it's considered like a Christian cult but they're called like Cainites which I believe is someone from the Bible. I'm not too knowledgeable about all the stories in the Bible but it seems like an interesting religious cult, a little bit different than what I was expecting. I will be listening to another audiobook and I think the one that I'm going to pick is The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. That is also on my TBR for April, so I thought I would read another book for my April TBR. I think I said in my TBR video that it was the Second World War, but I believe The Alice Network is World War One France. But then you also have a secondary perspective, which is... I think it might be the 40s or the 50s, so it could be like both world wars, I'm not entirely sure. But someone did comment in my TBR video that it was one of their favourite historical fictions, which makes me more excited because I hadn't heard about this before it was picked for my library book club, that's why I'm reading it. And I hadn't really heard of it at all, so knowing that someone said that they really enjoyed it has definitely boosted my excitement for it. But then last night I really did want to read in the evening, we'd done all our family stuff in the day, and I thought what is a short book that I can get through really quickly? And funnily enough Jade from Jade Ray Reads had just posted a video, I think it was like her recent reads, like a recent wrap up, and she talked about a book called The Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince and this is a novella set in the Elderling world by Robin Hobb. I'm sure you've heard me talk about Robin Hobb, she is my favourite author and I have loved the two series that I've read from her but this is a prequel novella following these two characters, the Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince and the story is recounted from Felicity's point of view and Felicity, she's had numerous roles during her life but she started out as the daughter of the wet nurse of the Willful Princess. Then she became a wet nurse herself. She was kind of like a nanny, that kind of person, a maid. And it's her recounting the stories of these two individuals, which are referenced in the Farsia trilogy and I believe that they're also going to be referenced in the next trilogy that I'm reading which is the Tawny Man trilogy and I did really really enjoy this. I listened to the entirety of this, it was only I think it was like three and a half hours so I listened to that and I did really really enjoy it. It was very much the kind of tale where you're just sitting down on a cold night in front of a fire and someone's just recounting this story. That was the kind of feel it had, especially considering I was listening to it as an audiobook. It really felt like I was just sat there and someone was telling me this story. And I think it really exemplifies like Robin Hobb for me. I find her books incredibly comforting, but they're also like incredibly sad. This is a very tragic story and I didn't love it as much as her core books but I think that's just because of its length. It takes me quite a few hundred pages to like really get invested in characters and because this was only like I think it's 180 pages it wasn't I wasn't able to like fully love these characters but I could still appreciate how sad their stories were but yeah, I really enjoyed that. Also, there was surprising LGBT rep in this, which I wasn't expecting. I don't think Robin Hobb has done that before in one of her books, but her books are like a little bit older, the ones I've been reading. So I'm wondering if there might be some like LGBT relationships in her later books, because this one was written after the books. I think this was written in 2013. So that was really nice to be included. And yeah, I really did enjoy that one. But that means that I have read three books this weekend. I'm very proud of that. I literally read three books last month. So to already have three books on, is it like the 5th of April or something, is very, very exciting. So yesterday my page count was 184 pages from The Willful Princess and The Piebald Prince. That was the entirety of it. And then 5% of Sorrowland. I don't exactly know the page count for that, but it probably wasn't very many pages. It's 
four o'clock now and I have listened to about two and a half hours of the Alice Network so I thought I would give you some of my thoughts. So far I'm really enjoying it. So we have got this dual perspective going on but you have one perspective which is in 1947 following this young woman who is pregnant and her mother is taking her, like she's an American and her mother is taking her to Switzerland for an abortion because I'm guessing abortion must be legal there and she's from quite a well-off family but her cousin has gone missing so her cousin went missing during the war and she's trying to find her cousin so she ends up going to this woman called Evelyn and then you're also following Evelyn's story in the First World War I think it's 1915 and she has just been recruited to be a spy in France and I am definitely preferring Evelyn's story I'm really enjoying the spy part of this book and the other perspective is okay I'm somewhat interested but also definitely not as interested as I am in the spy story and we know that Evelyn has gone through some things because you're following her obviously in 1947 as well and she has stuff to do with her hands like it looks like someone might have broken all her fingers at one point and she's obviously suffering with a lot of trauma probably PTSD she has a lot of like panic attacks in small spaces and I feel like bad things are gonna happen to her during the war which is to be expected I think in a spy novel not everything's going to be all fun but I am definitely enjoying the spy part and especially because it's the first world war I feel like a lot of war stories are set in the second world war and there are definitely references to the second world war as we're trying to find the American's cousin who went missing and she was also in France so I'm guessing that these two stories are going to kind of intertwine at some point which I'm very intrigued about I'm definitely intrigued like I would say my intrigue is incredibly high at the moment it's not a long audiobook I think it's like 15 hours so I still got about 12 and a half hours left definitely not going to be finishing that one today but I do want to get a few more hours through and I'm sure that I can do that while I'm finishing my diamond painting I'm excited to keep going and I will maybe check in with you later I'm not entirely sure maybe check in with you tomorrow okay then time for some final thoughts it is now Tuesday morning so I thought that I would come and wrap up this vlog and yesterday I did read but I didn't read as much as I thought I would so I listened to four and a half hours of the Alice Network and my thoughts are somewhat similar to what they were. I think I updated you earlier saying that I much preferred the spy plotline and that's still the case but the problem is is that the other plotline which is following this girl called Charlie trying to find her cousin who went missing in the second world war she is really starting to grate on me like I'm starting to really dislike her character I just feel like she's really nosy and like it's like why were you in prison why were you doing this what's the going on I just feel like it's okay to want to know answers but you also are being like really pushy to these people who clearly have trauma in their past so just like let them be so she's starting to grate on me a little bit and right now I just don't see the point in her perspective so I'm kind of hoping that that perspective does lead into something because I don't know why the book wasn't just a spy novel at this point it is quite a long book I think it's like 500 pages so I don't really know why that perspective is there right now I just want all the spy stuff and every single time we finish a spy chapter we go to the 1947 perspective and I just don't care so right now my feelings on that book are a little bit mixed but then I did try to read some more of Sorrowland but I literally got one percent more I by the end of the day I was just kind of exhausted from reading which isn't surprising considering I've been reading non-stop for like three days so I didn't really get any further in that my thoughts I really don't have many thoughts the writing is really nice in that the beginning was very captivating it drew me in instantly it's very straight into the action 
but I have a feeling it could be like a survival story, which is something that I usually avoid. I don't like survivalist stories or like apocalyptic novels. This isn't an apocalyptic novel, but that kind of someone's trying to survive against the odds. I do not like because it stresses me out a little bit. So I'm hoping that the survival section doesn't last too long. I had another look at the blurb because I only like briefly looked at it when I requested it because I had read a book from this author before that I really enjoyed so when I saw they had a new book I wanted to try it out and it does say that she's surviving in the woods then she starts attacking people who've like wronged her and then she goes into like the normal world because at this point she's just in the forests surrounding the compound where she's grown up so I'm hoping that when she like explores further from the forest that it will go away from the survival aspects because that's something that I just do not like in books that's just like a personal taste thing but it's okay so far. I haven't really got very far through so I couldn't really tell you much anyway but I have written down how many pages I've read so let's have a look. So I started very early on on Saturday morning reading 12 pages of Dracula which I'm enjoying. It's atmospheric. I haven't got very far through this one. This is probably going to be the book that I tackle this week. Then I read all 308 pages of The Humans by Matt Haig. I gave this one four stars. I absolutely loved it and I thought it was very unique. There was a lot of discussion of mental health in this that I really appreciated and I would definitely recommend this if you're looking for a sci-fi or even just like a contemporary with sci-fi elements. I think that you would really enjoy this one. Then I listened to all 251 pages of In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. I adored this one. I gave it five stars. This is a memoir about domestic violence and intimate partner abuse and I just thought it was incredibly powerful and raw and upsetting but it was so beautifully written, so beautifully constructed. I definitely recommend that one if you can handle the subject matter. That one highlight of the week. Then as I said I read about six percent of Sorrowland which I think is about 20 pages. I was trying to work out on the actual page count of the book so really not very many pages of that. Then I listened to the whole of The Willful Princess and The Piebald Prince. That was 184 pages. That is a novella set in the Robin Hobb Elderling world. I also really enjoyed that one and I gave it four stars. It was very just cosy and I love being back in that world but it was also you know really sad which is like Robin Hobb's signature. You've got to be comforting but sad. And then finally I listened to 4 hours 30 minutes of the Alice Network which I worked out was about 150 pages and I'm enjoying it. Like I really love the spy sections but I'm kind of starting to hate the rest which is like the 1947 perspective because it's dual perspective. So I'm hoping that perspective gets a little bit more interesting as we go along. But that means in total I read about 925 pages. A lot of that is approximation for Sorrowland and the Alice Network because I'm kind of working it out as a percentage of the whole. So I could be wrong in exactly how many pages I've read, but over 900 pages I'm sure I've hit that. So I'm very happy with that. I'm incredibly happy with that because last month Month. I think I only read maybe like 1,300 pages over the entire month and we are only on the 6th of April and I've read over 900 pages so I'm very happy about that. And now it's time to go and do some more studying. I'm on the final stretch now, I've just got to keep going. I am exhausted, I just want it to be over but that's what can you do? I have had a great weekend though and yeah. I've had a good time this weekend. I hope that you have enjoyed this vlog. I feel like it could be quite a long vlog so if you've made it this far thank you. I appreciate you for being here and that's it for today's video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and to everyone out there stay curious. Bye!